Flint Marco and Peter Parker actually have quite a lot in common because they both represent a darker, malevolent force that cannot be entirely controlled. Once it's conjured, it really it has the capability of wreaking terrific physical harm and damage. Everybody always talks about how great it is to play a bad guy, and it's because you really, you get to perform emotions that you probably don't really go through that much in your day-to-day -day existence as just a normal person in society. And I think that what they really captured with this story in Spider-Man 3 is that Peter Parker he really gets to play both. I mean, it is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, and as everyone knows, Mr. Hyde was a lot cooler than Dr. Jekyll. These darker instincts and feelings that, that, that are present, once that alien symbiote enters his life, it's only it's like an addiction of, of sorts. It is an addiction. And Peter Parker gives over to it, and then he really has to fight it. He's just a normal kid. He's bitten by a spider and he gains these powers. But he's, he, when he's just Peter Parker, he's just a normal guy. And I think that it was really apparent in the actor that they picked. I mean, Toby is a very accessible, kind of open, honest, innocent personality on screen. And I think that that's where the popularity of the movie series starts. And then beyond that, with all the characters, including the villains, you know, when the action sequences settle, you have to have moments of emotional intimacy that anchors the audience in such a way to the characters that they want, they care about what happens to these characters, even the villains. I'm pretty gigantic in the video game, so good luck trying to battle me. You're gonna lose.